Okay, so this is the um, worksheet for section 3.4. Um, section 3.4 has to do with motion in space. And I did talk about, you know, things like flying objects and their velocity and acceleration and initial, uh, initial value problems and so on. But there's one thing that I haven't covered and uh, that is uh, found in every textbook. And so I will discuss that. And that's in the second part of this uh, handout, the second page. But um, the first page is uh, sort of a, a, a setup for that. Everything that you have here in, in the first page and on top of the second page is what you need in order to clearly understand that portion, the last portion of 3.4, which is the very last thing you see in chapter three. So um, I want you to just um, uh, pay special attention to this. Everything that we are doing in the front on page one is a review, I believe from like the, uh, 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 maybe uh, two sections ago. So I'll go through this rather quickly and then try to put more emphasis on the last portion of the second page. Okay, so we suppose that there is a vector valued function, uh, three dimensional, and uh, we say um, R is differentiable if the derivative exists, which of course the derivative is simply X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Uh, probably one of the easiest things for you to remember in this class. Um, there are differentiation rules and uh, if R is a uh, differentiable vector valued function, let's say VVF, that's vector valued function, and F of T is a real valued function, which is like sine of T or you know, E to the T or whatever, and C is a constant, then all these differentiation for uh, rules will still apply, okay? And you have, uh, you've written this already, so you don't have to rewrite this, but uh, just remember these. If you have a constant, you can take the constant out, the sum and the difference of the derivatives are equal to the difference, the sum and the difference, no, what did I say? The derivative of a sum or, or difference is equal to the, um, the, the sum or the difference of the derivatives, okay? This one says the, um, it's actually a, a one form of the product rule, F R prime, where F is real valued and R is vector valued is F prime R plus F R prime. Same thing works with the um, dot product, okay? That would be R1 prime dot R2 plus R1 dot R2 prime. And then the same thing also applies in the cross product. So the cross product, the derivative of a cross product is R1 prime cross R2 plus R1 prime, no, that is the same thing, R1 plus R2 prime. Okay, and by the way, you can switch this here. Like for most of, of in fact, all the um, product rules we had, you could have switched this and this or whatever, okay? But here you can't. Uh, R1 has to come first, whether it's R1 or R1 prime, because if you switch the order, remember the product, uh, cross product is not commutative. Uh, you will get the opposite of, um, uh, of this if you switch this to R2 prime cross R1. All right, now if you have a composite of two functions, then you apply the chain rule. In this case, R, well, in this case, it's R prime of the inside function, Fx, Ft, times the derivative of the inside function. This is a real valued function. This is a vector valued function. And therefore the whole thing is a vector valued function. Okay, we also proved this theorem, the constant magnitude theorem. We did not give this name um, when we learned it the first time, but if you have a vector valued function, that is of the constant magnitude, let's say C, okay? Then the R prime, the derivative and R are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. And here's a proof, which I've already uh, done in another video. And all, you know, here's a picture of it. So if um, R, if the magnitude of R is constant, that means it goes uh, hovers over the circle, around the circle. So anytime you have a vector here, you know, the um, magnitude, well, regardless of the magnitude, which is constant, um, the uh, velocity vector will be tangent to it, okay? In fact, it is tangent to that circle. Same thing here. See this gray thing here? Uh, this gray curve is showing you the motion of something that's going on uh, on the surface of the, of the sphere. And so of course, then that means the, um, the, the magnitude in the three-dimensional space is constant. And so if you have this blue arrow, which is um, R of T, then the tangent is also going to be perpendicular. It's R prime, right? 
And so with that, you should remember that this very important fact that the normal component or the normal vector, the principal unit normal vector is always perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. Because once you're given a R, R prime is of course parallel to T, right? And uh, so this T, this is of the, the, the constant magnitude. So T prime, although T prime is not unit vector, it is parallel to the normal vector because the, the normalized version of T prime is exactly what N is, right? So, um, so this and this are perpendicular to each other, very much like you know, um, R prime and T prime are perpendicular to each other. And that's why uh, we can always draw a picture like this. When an object is moving along the curve, this is the curve, I'm talking about. Okay. And if this red arrow is the tangent or the unit tangent vector, then the unit normal vector will always be pointing inward and it is perpendicular to the uh, tangential um, vector capital T. However, this does not mean that the acceleration is not, uh, is, a per, uh, is, um, is parallel to any of these. Okay. In fact, the acceleration could be in any direction here. Okay. Remember the acceleration is the second derivative. Normal is not the second derivative. Normal is, how do you get the normal, the, the capital N? It's R prime normalized, which is this, and then T prime normalized, which is that. Okay. So um, then here comes uh, the important, well, sort of uh, the, the last part of uh, this chapter. Many times for applications, we need to decompose that acceleration. See this acceleration here? Okay. Um, because you have the tangential component and the normal component defined, many times we would like to def describe this acceleration in this, uh, what we call the Frenet frame, which is Tn and, and V. And so how do you describe this? Well, you want to find this component when you project A onto T, and when you project A onto N, you want to find this component, okay? Uh, this, these are the coordinates in the Frenet frame right uh, locally around this point as the object moves. So how do you decompose the acceleration A into the tangential and the normal directions? That's the question that we have here at hand. This will not take a long time. And, um, and I'll show you what to do with this, okay, in a moment. So let's see if we can figure this out. So we need to have this acceleration partitioned or decomposed into the tangential component and the normal component, right? So something's gonna come, it's some sort of an expression of T. Let's call this A sub T. This is the tangential, compo yeah, tangential component of the acceleration. And this is the normal component of the acceleration, right? How do you do this? How do you figure this out? It turns out there's a, a very clever, almost elegant way of uh, coming up with this, right? And so I am going to um, do a preliminary work first, which seems to have almost like nothing to do with what we're trying to do. But um, things work out very nicely because of all these um, derivative formulas, um, especially the, the multiplication or the product formula and so on. Okay, so first you remember capital T, okay, this is the norm of, well, this is the um, R prime divided by its norm. It's a normalized R prime, which is a normalized velocity, right? So it's V over the norm of V. So let's go ahead and write V as T times the velocity. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and do, it's a norm of V times capital T. Remember capital T is only the normalized version of the velocity. Second, Oh, curvature, remember the curvature? The curvature was defined to be the, the, the norm of the T over DS. And then of course, we, that was totally useless. So we had to do something. And so you divided the top and bottom by DT. And so the top is the, uh, the norm of T prime and the bottom is the uh, norm of V. So you can write the norm of T prime as the curvature times if you fill this out, you, you see what I'm talking about, right? So this has to be this times this, obviously. Okay. Now, the thing is though, uh, normal, the, the principal unit normal vector also has something to do with T prime. It's a normalized T prime. So here you can rewrite T prime as what? Um, 
Well, let's see, you can write this as the norm of t prime times t prime, uh, no times n. You see that? All I'm saying again is this times this is equal to the top. Okay, but we have an expression for the first part, which is the magnitude or the norm of t prime, which is k curvature, the norm of v, and of course n. All right, so this is one way of writing t prime, okay, and that's part two. So I'm going to refer to parentheses one, which is v is equal to the norm of v times t, and the parentheses two. Now, why do we have this? Uh, here's here's the idea. Remember, uh, a the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function, right? Which is of course the second um, derivative of. Did I do this right? Yeah, the second derivative of the uh, position function. But by equation number one above here, okay, you can write the, the velocity as the norm of v times t. And you are taking the derivative of it. You see that? So what I'm doing here is I'm taking um, the velocity function, okay? And that velocity function v is this. So you are taking the derivative of that, which is why you have that derivative thing here. So now this is a product. This is the derivative of the product, the norm of v, which is a, a you know real valued function, and here is a vector valued function. How do you take the derivative of the product of two functions? Okay. So this is the derivative of v prime t plus the derivative of uh, sorry, uh, it's a norm of v prime times t plus the norm of v times t prime. Okay, by uh, product. Okay, this is the product rule. And this is page one, number three. Let me go back to page one, number three. Number three is this one here. Okay, that is the product rule. That is the form of product rule we are using. It's a product, it's a derivative of a, the product of a real valued function and a vector valued function. Following this so far? Okay, so that's one way to write this and something dramatic happens here. This is capital T, look. Uh, what I wanted to do was to partition A into a component with T and N, right? Well, um, this thing here, T prime, you see that equation two tells you how to write T prime in terms of N. So this is, you have a norm of V here and then T prime can be written as K, the norm of V again and N. All right, so here is my um, final form that I need. This turns out to be the norm of V prime cap times capital T plus, and uh, what do you have? You have a curvature and norm of V squared and N. All right, so I have successfully and elegantly decomposed A into the T component and the N component. So it turns out that the tangential component of the acceleration vector happens to be, oops, that's not it, is the, um, the uh, der derivative of the speed. Interesting, derivative of the speed function is the um, tangential component. And for the normal component, it is the curvature times the um, square of the derivative, or the square of the uh, uh, speed, okay? So that's the, um, those are the components that you will need in order to come up with this. All right, so um, there are some exercises um, uh, that have to do with this. I have decided not to assign you anything. And in fact, this last part here, um, this will not be on the exam, even though it is covered in most books and I felt like I needed to cover this because it is a part of the calculus study on motion in space. But um, at this point, I will not have this on the test or on your homework, okay? So uh, this uh, worksheet is sort of like an extra thing, even though you are uh, responsible for and you should be familiar with you know, this first page as well. Okay, so that's it for section 3.4 and that's it for chapter three. All right, so I will see you next time you go, which is probably chapter four. You probably have a test before that. Anyway, I will talk to you later. Bye.